everyone welcome to church online with limitless goa so glad that you could join us for yet another amazing week of this sermon series the good part we've been hearing so many testimonies of what god is doing in the lives of the people in our church through this series and as you get ready to hear the word i wanted to make a decision to take this word and apply it in your week but before we get into the word let's get into a time of giving the beautiful thing about giving is that anybody and everybody gets to give it doesn't matter what your economic status is it doesn't matter what car you drive or what job you have if you play a part in the big picture of the kingdom of god you can do it just by giving we've made it easy for you to give online the details are all on the screen but right now let's get into the word let me first start by welcoming everyone who is joining us uh, online welcome to limitless uh, i don't know if you can hear this but the whole church is cheering for you because we love you and hey please consider coming here and and being here in person we want to welcome you properly as a guest at limitless church and we want to offer you some amazing coffee because we have coffee now at limitless church but hey um um i know the word is going to be um uh, a bomb word for you this word is for you uh, and so i pray that this word will change some parts of your life if not your entire life but everyone else you're here already you have been welcomed um uh, but just for the camera let me welcome you again welcome to limitless welcome to the word um uh, as you know we are in the middle of a sermon series that we are calling what the good part the good part the good part um uh, this is week number 5 of the sermon series the good part five weeks this is week number 5 um uh, but this is also the last week all right this is the last sermon of this series i promised you we're going to we're going to spend the entire month of january in the sermon series and guess what uh, this week is the last sunday of january right is it it is it is okay so this is the last week but this is also the most important week this is also the most important sermon of this series and just in case you missed the previous sermons if you've missed the previous parts um let me say two things number one watch the previous sermons okay really watch them because to really get the word of god to get the 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 essence of the word you need to watch them again even if you've watched them before and you've forgotten them watch them again yeah. right you know netflix you watch netflix it says watch it, uh, watch it again in the same way okay limitless church also says watch it again So watch it again but uh, uh because you're here already you're watching this already then let me give you a quick summary a quick recap ab- about what we're talking about um every area of your life has two parts every area of your life has two parts it has a good part and a bad part yeah. every area your job has a good part and a bad part yeah. your finances have a good part and a bad part your relationships have a good part and a bad part right your your health has a good part and a bad part and the problem with us with us human beings the problem is that we tend to focus only on the bad part and not on the good part yeah, yeah. let me give you an example if you if you fall sick if you catch a cold guess where your focus is going to be on throughout the day on your cold right on your sickness you'll be thinking throughout the day is it cold is it covid what's going to happen to me now what's all this you're going to google symptoms you're going to self diagnose yourself right um you're going to think you're going to focus on the sickness on the cold on the bad part and if i call you up and i ask you hey how are you doing what's going on uh, what's up you know what you're going to say to me you're going to say i am sick yeah. right that's what you're going to say i'm sick but that is not completely true That is not completely true because you're not completely sick. Right? Sure your nose is sick. Maybe your throat is sick, but your hands are not sick. Your legs are not sick. Your eyes are not sick. The majority part of your body is not sick and yet you're saying I am sick. Why? Because your focus is on the sickness. Your focus is on the bad part and not on your good part. 
Another example, um, uh, when your boss shouts at you at work, you, you get a shouting from your boss uh, and, and you're, you know, you're, you're in that zone, you're getting a shouting. And if I call you up and you, know, you, you, you answer my call, which is very rare, um, but you, say you answer my call and you know, I'm like, uh, what's up, how are you doing? You know what your answer is going to be? You know what you're going to say to me? You're going to say, I'm having a bad day, right? That's what you're going to say. Your answer is going to be, I'm having a bad day. But that is not completely true, is it? Because your day is not completely bad. Yeah. It's just the five minutes of your day that are bad. It's just the five minutes that your boss shouted at you. But the remaining 1,435 minutes of your day, they're not bad at all. Yeah. But yet, you're saying, I'm having a bad day. Why? Because your focus is on the bad five minutes of your day. Yeah. Your focus is on the bad part of your day and not on the good part. Yeah. And all I'm trying to do in this sermon series is to get you to focus on the good part. I'm trying to get you to shift your focus from the bad part to the good part. From the badness of the world to the goodness of God. Because check this out, the goodness of God is found in the good part. Heart. So focus on the good part. Skip to the good part. You know that song? Yeah, just like that song. Skip to the good part. Everyone say the good part. You don't have to sing the song, the good part. But, but um, it's not always good part versus bad part, right? It's not always good versus bad. Like last week I said, sometimes it is big versus small. Right? And last week I spoke about the small part, if you remember that. You remember that? You remember the cockroach? Ashton, where's Ashton at? You remember the cockroach? Okay. Uh, Sunil, your lizard comes today, okay? Yeah, 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 I have a lizard for you today. But, um, but sometimes, sometimes it's not even big versus small. Sometimes it's not good versus bad. Sometimes, in fact, most of the times, it is right versus wrong. Right? That's the big thing today, right versus wrong. That's the big question everybody is asking. Is, is it right or is it wrong? Is he doing the right thing? Is she doing the right thing, right? The big idea of today is do the right thing. The most popular advice of today is do the right thing. And everybody is saying the same thing. Every, every influential person in the world is saying, do the right thing, right? Yeah. Even the wannabe influencers of social media are also saying, do the right thing. I mean, they don't know what it is. They don't know what the right thing is, but they're just saying, do the right thing. Thing, right? Even politicians are telling us to do the right thing. Imagine they're telling us to do the right thing. But everybody is saying the same thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. You're also saying, by the way, do the right thing, right? You're saying this throughout the week. Do the right thing. On social media, you're saying it. Do the right thing. If you're not saying it, you're sharing someone else's post that says, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Right? Everybody is saying the same thing, do the right thing. My question is this, is if everybody, if everybody is doing the right thing, then why are so many wrong things happening in the world? The fight of today is, is the fight for the right thing, right? But if everybody is fighting for the right thing, then how come there are so many wrong things happening in the world? In fact, in fact, if everybody is fighting for the right thing, there should not even be a fight, right? Because if everybody is fighting for the right thing, who are they fighting against? Let me tell you who they're fighting against. They're fighting against people who are also fighting for the right thing. Because here's the problem. You're fighting me because you're fighting for the right thing, and I'm fighting you also because I'm also fighting for the right thing. Because the right thing for you might not be the right thing for me. In fact, the right thing for you might be the wrong thing for me. The right thing for one country might be the wrong thing for another country. The right thing for one religion might be the wrong thing for another religion. The right thing for one culture might be the wrong thing for another culture. The right thing for one mindset might be the wrong thing for another mindset. So, so, fighting for the right thing 
might not be the best fight for you to fight. Fighting for the right thing might not be the best fight you can fight. And look, I'm not saying never fight for the right thing, okay? Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying never fight for the right thing. What I am saying is don't fight every fight that comes your way because you think it's the right thing. Because here's, let me give you the best advice that you can get in today's age, in today's generation. The best advice. Not every fight is your fight. Not every fight is your fight. There are some fights which are not your fight. Some fights not your fight. Like for example, the fight between me and my wife, not your fight. But we love to do that, right? We love to get involved in someone else's fight. Especially in Goa, man, this is the thing we do in Goa. We love to get involved in someone else's fight, and especially if it's our neighbor's fight. Because that is our entertainment in Goa. We don't need Netflix in Goa. You don't need a TV in Goa. You don't need cereals in Goa. You have your neighbor's fights, and that is our entertainment, right? Growing up, I had this, this uncle and auntie who would every evening at 7 p.m. on the dot, like they had an alarm or something, they would fight every evening, every evening. But there was this other auntie, now she was not married, so she did not have a husband to fight, but this other auntie would get involved in their fight. Every evening, like clockwork, right? But here's the crazy part. She would get involved in their fight from her own house. (laughs) She's not even there. Like this uncle and auntie, they start to fight, they start raising up the voice, and she thinks it's her invitation now to raise her voice. So now she joins in the fight. And every evening, she says the same thing in Konkani, same dialogue. Same, same comment. She's not even there in the house. She can't even see the fight. She doesn't even know the context of the fight. She doesn't know what's happening. And yet her same golden advice. Tapot. Tapot. You need translation, really? I'll, I'll, I'll give you another. You, you, know, you know what we Goans do? The first thing that we do when there's an accident You know what we do? The first thing. We don't see who's injured. We don't see who's hurt. We don't see whose fault it is. We want to see the number plate of the car or the bike, right? Because we want to see if that person is a tourist or not. Because if that person is a tourist, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. It doesn't matter who's injured, who's hurt. There's only one thing that matters. Tapot di and in, and, in, and, in all, and in all this, there's one guy. There's one guy who doesn't get involved in the fight. He doesn't say anything. He comes, looks at the number and goes. You know where he's going? Yeah. He's going to play Matka. <laughs> that is Goa. Welcome to Goa. Welcome to Goa. Golden advice, if you're not from here, if you're considering visiting Goa, please do not meet with an accident because you'll know the meaning, the, the literal meaning of tapot. Okay? <laughs> but that is what we do, right? That's what Goans do. But if, if Goans are like this, if the general population of Goa is like this, imagine what Christians in Goa are like. Imagine if Goans get involved in a fight every time, imagine the Christians in Goa. Man, Christians in Goa are the next level of getting involved in a fight because we have the Bible. Right? Christians in Goa have the Bible. We have the legal right to fight. Because there are laws, there are uh, do's and don'ts that we can use for a fight. Right? You've seen those people who use the Bible for a fight? Right? They even memorize scriptures. They don't carry the Bible. They memorize scriptures, not for themselves, only so they can fight with someone else. Someone came to me, started fighting with me about tattoos, about my tattoos. This guy, I've not even, I'm, I was not even a pastor, this was way back then, and, and this guy was like, uh, how can you have tattoos? 
my body, my arm, my tattoo, and he's fighting with me, and he's like, you cannot have a tattoo. I'm like, what, should I chop off my hand now, chop off my arm, what do you, right? And he's like, you cannot have a tattoo. Don't you know the Bible says you cannot have a tattoo? Don't you know it's written in Leviticus 19.28 that you cannot have a tattoo? He memorized the scripture. He, he showed it to me. Let, me. let me, let me show that to you. Do not cut your bodies for the dead, or do not make, uh, mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord also. Okay, he, he didn't leave out that part. He said that part also. And I was like, man, since you're so good with the Bible, since you memorized the entire Bible, can you tell me one verse before this one? Can you tell me one verse? And this is the best thing, okay? When someone throws scriptures at you, just, just tell them, can you tell me the previous verse, please? And this guy was like, um, no, actually, I only know this one. Uh, this is the only one I memorized because my, my pastor tells me this one every now and then. And we use this scripture to correct. He didn't say to, to, to fight. He said to correct others with tattoos. We use the scripture. So I said, let me show you the previous scripture. One scripture before Leviticus 19.28. This is what it says. One scripture before that. It says, do not trim off the hair on your temples or trim your beards. And I, I looked at him, I said, the Bible says don't trim your beard. And you shaved your beard? You're against the Bible. You shaved? And he was like, um, I said, your pastor didn't tell you this? He's like, no, actually my pastor also shaves. <laughs> right? Don't use the Bible to fight someone else's fight. Don't use the Bible to pick a fight. Um, the, don't use the Bible for the wrong purpose. Because it's not about what's written in the Bible, it's about your intention. If you don't know, if you've not done a Bible study, if you don't know context, if you don't know what tattoos mean, the symbolism of tattoos, the symbolism of hair and beard, if you don't know all of that, if you're not a Bible scholar, and even some Bible scholars are stupid sometimes, but if you don't know all of that, please don't use the Bible to fight. Yeah. Yeah. Using the Bible for the wrong purpose is satanic. Do you know that? Yeah. It's satanic because that is what Satan uses. Satan doesn't have another book. He uses the Bible for the wrong intention. Because do you know what Satan used to tempt Jesus when he took him on top of the temple? Do you know what he used? He used the Bible. He used Psalm 91. He used your favorite psalm. Angels will come hold you up. You won't strike your foot against the stone. That's Psalm 91. Satan used the Bible with the wrong intention. Don't use the Bible for the wrong intention. The Bible doesn't give you the right to fight someone else's fight. The Bible gives you the power to fight your own fight. Because you have your own fight. There is a fight that you are called to fight. And this is what your Bible says about your fight. This is what the Bible says about your fight. It says, fight the good fight. Fight the the good fight of the faith. Fight the good fight. The Bible doesn't say fight the right fight. The Bible says fight the good fight. It's all about the good fight. And so today, I want to talk to you about the good fight. The title of my sermon is The Good Fight. Sermon number five of the good part is the good fight. Because it, it really, the goodness of God depends on what you're fighting and how you're fighting. Amen. The goodness of God depends on your fight. Amen. The good fight. The good fight. So, um, in fact, let me, let me say this. Let me say this uh, quickly. Um, this is so, so important. I just, got a, I just got a message. So sorry. Let me get off this part. It says, my genes are delivered to, to my place. Mintra sends me a message. I, should I reply back? I'm preaching the word and I have my jeans. I almost checked whether I'm wearing jeans or not. But let me say this. Let me say this. Sometimes the right fight is not the good fight. Sometimes the right fight is not the good fight. Sometimes when you're busy fighting the right fight, you might be fighting against the good fight. Sometimes when you're fighting for what is right, you might just be fighting against what is good. Yeah. 
Because sometimes it's not about right versus wrong. Sometimes it can be about right versus good. And I want to show you a story in the Bible uh, where there is a fight going on. And this is a fight between fighting for what is right and fighting for what is good. The good fight and the right fight. And Jesus is there, so you like it. Otherwise, you won't like this because some of you are fighting this fight. But open your Bibles. I want to take you to a story. If you don't have a Bible, no problem. It's on the screen for all you lazy people. But otherwise, um, don't pretend to look down because you don't have a Bible. It's fine. You can look up. Uh, Matthew 12, Matthew 12, 10 to 14. In the synagogue, there was a man with a crippled hand. Some Jews were there looking for a reason to accuse Jesus of doing wrong, of doing wrong. So they asked him, is it right? Is it right to heal on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered, if, you, if any of you has a sheep and it falls into a ditch on the Sabbath, you will take the sheep and help it out of the ditch, right? Yeah. So surely a man is more important than sheep. That's why I don't call you sheep, because you're more important than sheep. But then Jesus says, then Jesus says something so, so important that no one had ever said until this point. Check this out. This is what Jesus said. So it is right to do good on the Sabbath. And everyone was like, what is he saying? It is right to do good on the Sabbath. And then Jesus said to the man with the crippled hand, hold out your hand. The man held out his hand, and it became well again, the same as the other hand. But the Pharisees left and made plans to kill Jesus. The good fight. Crazy story, right? Crazy fight, crazy story, crazy miracle. Jesus heals a man with a crippled hand. But this is not just a miracle. This is also a message. Because Jesus did not only heal a man with a crippled hand. Jesus healed a man with a crippled hand on the Sabbath, which was a big, big problem. Because in the Jewish law, you could not work on the Sabbath, right? And since Jesus was a healer, he could not heal on the Sabbath. Since Jesus was a miracle worker, he could not perform a miracle on the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath was very, very important. The Sabbath was the fourth most important law in the Jewish law. Fourth most important commandment in the Jewish law. And not just Jewish law, also in your Bible, the Sabbath is the fourth commandment, right? You remember, you remember your commandments? Remember the Ten Commandments? Remember your Sunday school? Your Sunday school teacher told you to memorize all the Ten Commandments? How many of you remember? Y'all are going to hell because your Sunday school teacher told you if you don't follow the Ten Commandments, you will go to hell, right? By the way, you know she was lying, right? She was lying because you don't go to heaven um, by following commandments. You go to heaven by following Jesus. You're not saved by the law. You're saved by grace, right? But these, the religious people of the day, they were trying to get saved by the law, by following the law, by following the commandments. They're trying to get saved by following the commandments. And so since healing was not part of the commandment, healing was not mentioned in, in the Ten Commandments, they go to Jesus and they ask Jesus this question. They ask him, is it right, is it right to heal on the Sabbath? Is it right? So this was a question about what is right. This was a fight about doing the right thing. Is it right? Is it wrong? Yeah. Right? This was about doing the right thing. But, but, they don't ask Jesus this question to find out what the right thing is. Because they know what the right thing is. Right? These were Jews. Some of them were Jewish leaders. Some of them were, were teachers of the law. They would teach others to do the right thing. So they knew what the right thing was. They would teach others to do the right thing. They asked Jesus this question not to know what the right thing was. They asked Jesus this question hoping that Jesus would do the wrong thing. Because the Bible gives us their intention. The Bible says this, some Jews were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus of doing wrong, of doing wrong. 
This was a fight about doing the wrong thing versus doing the right thing. This was that fight. And it's the same fight some of you are busy fighting. Doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. This is the same fight that some of you have given all your time and all your energy, all your attention to. Fighting for the right thing. But let me show you the fight again. This is so, so important. Let me, let me, let me show you the fight. The Bible says, I mean, they, they ask the question, is it right to heal on the Sabbath? Is it right? So the answer should have been in either two options, right? Option A, Jesus could have said it is right. Yes, it is right to heal on the Sabbath. Or option B, it is wrong to heal on the Sabbath. Just two options. This was that kind of question, right? Is it right or is it wrong? But check this out. Check this out. If Jesus had to choose either option, A or B, in the end, he would end up offending somebody. Either way. If Jesus had to say, A, it is right to heal on the Sabbath, guess what? He would offend the law. But if he had to say, B, it is wrong to heal on the Sabbath, he would offend the crippled man. Either way, he was offending someone. Right? Now listen to me carefully. The result of fighting for the right thing is always offense. The result of fighting for the right thing is always offense. You'll always end up offending somebody. You'll end up offending someone. You'll end up hurting someone. You'll end up judging someone. You'll end up accusing someone. That's the price you pay for fighting for the right thing. Offense, hurt, judgment, accusation. But you know the reward you get for fighting for the right thing? You know the reward? Offense, hurt, judgment, accusation. That's the reward. Do you know why? Because when you're fighting for the right thing, you're fighting against a person who's also fighting for the right thing. Because in their minds, everybody is right. No one wakes up in the morning saying, I want to do the wrong thing today. Everyone wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to do the right thing. In the mind, everyone is right. So you're fighting against someone who's also fighting for the right thing. That's your fight that you're fighting today. So what do, what do we do now? What are you saying, pastor? Should, should, should we not fight for what is right? Should we not stand up for what is right? Should we let the government do whatever they want to do? Let's, uh, let's allow corruption to go on. Let's allow injustice to go on. Let's allow animal cruelty to go on. Let's allow uh, every kind of evil to go on. Let's allow the bad to go on. What are you saying? What are you telling me to do? What should we do? That's the question, right? Here's the answer. Do what Jesus did. And that is seriously the best answer anyone can give you. Do what Jesus did. And let me show you what Jesus did. Check this out. Jesus had two options, right? A, it is right to heal on the Sabbath. Or B, it is wrong to heal on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, no, C, C. He said, C. He said, it is right to do good on the Sabbath. You know what Jesus did here? You know what Jesus did? He changed the fight. Jesus changed the fight. Jesus changed the fight from fighting for the right thing to fighting for the good thing. He changed the fight. And I believe this is the same thing he wants you to do today. He wants you to change your fight. You came to church today hoping to hear a word from God. This is the word of the Lord today for you. Change your fight. Change your fight. Turn to your neighbor and say, change your fight. Change your fight. It's not about fighting for the right thing. It's about fighting for the good thing. Change your fight. It's not about fighting. Listen to me now. It's not about fighting for the right government. It's about fighting for the good government. Change your fight. 
It's not about fighting for the right news. It's about fighting for the good news. Change your fight. Change your fight. It's not about fighting for the right cause. It's about fighting for the good cause. Change your fight. I'm not saying change your words, okay? I'm not saying, saying word it differently. I'm not saying that. I'm, what I mean is change your fight. Fight for the goodness of God. That's your fight. Fight to bring the goodness of God in every situation that you're fighting in. That's your fight. Fight to bring the goodness of God to every person that you're fighting with. Because remember this, remember this. The person you're fighting with is also a person that Jesus died for. The person you're fighting with is also a person that God so loved that he gave his only son. The person you're fighting with is also a person who deserves the blood of Jesus, even, even though they did not say yes to Jesus yet. Amen. Don't forget the yet. Amen. The person you're fighting with deserves the goodness of God. So your fight should end with the goodness of God. Yeah. This is the question you should be asking yourself. How will this fight end? Will this fight end with offense, with hurt, with uh, accusations, with judgment, or will this fight end with the goodness of God? Yeah. That's the question, because that is the fight that you're called to fight. Yeah. You're called to fight the good fight. Turn to your neighbor and say, fight the good fight. <laughs> Not every fight is your fight, man. Not every fight is your fight. Don't pick on any fight. Not, not, every, man, not every fight that you feel like fighting is your fight. You know the itch that you get to fight sometimes when you hear someone else say something, not to you, but about something that you care about? You feel that itch to fight, right? I feel that itch a lot, okay? I am this person. I am preaching to myself before I preach to you. I feel this itch, right? It's like, it's like fighting someone on social media. Yeah. You, 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 know, you know when someone says something about you on social media and you feel the itch to fight, right? He, they, they comment about something on social media. Man, I, I, I have every week without fail, every single week, somebody commenting on something about the sermon, either about what I say, about what I, what I wear, about what I do, about my hair, about my beard, my mustache. Today it is going to be tattoos. I'm telling you, Ash, you're going to have a comment about my, let me show you, I have a tattoo. Okay, just saying, since you guys. But I've, I've seen this all my four years of ministry of the 200 or something weeks, 200 sermons that I preached, every time someone says something bad, and, and, and they, I'm doing my thing, they get involved in the fight, right? But I get this itch to fight, to say something back, to respond, right? But here's what I've learned, here's what I learned. I don't even know that person. That person is just a user on social media. I don't even know the person. I've never met the person in, in my life, right? You don't know their background. You don't know their context. You don't know their emotional state of mind. You don't know if they're sane or they're depressed or, or they have some issue in their minds. You don't know anything, but you're still fighting. Yeah. You're not winning, but you're still fighting, right? You're not making a difference, but you're still fighting. You're losing your energy, but you're still fighting, right? Or it's like um, fighting about your political views. This is the end thing, right? Since, since uh, elections are coming up, everyone is doing that, right? Uh, you, 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 you hate a, a certain political party or you hate a certain politician and you feel that itch to fight. I'm going to fight about this, right? You feel that compulsion to fight, this itch to fight. But here's the thing. Um, um, you don't even know that person. You never met that politician in your life. You don't know their background. You don't know their context. Everything that you know is from the news. And you know what the news shows you, right? Only the bad part. Yeah. 
only the bad side. So you're, you're, you saw something bad about this person on the news, so now you're fighting. You're fighting, you're fighting, but guess what? This politician doesn't even know you're fighting. <laughs> In fact, this politician doesn't even know you exist. But still you're fighting. You're fighting. You have 12 followers on Twitter. And you're like, no, I have to let, my, let the world know my opinions. You have 12 followers. Some of them have just followed you so that you can follow them. Right? You're not making a difference, but you're fighting. You're not changing anything, but you're fighting. Or it's like um, some, someone said this. You're showing the wrong finger to the politicians. This is the finger you should show. Only one person got it. And everyone else is... It's like fighting, it's like fighting against uh, a certain religion, right? We love to do that, especially Christians. You, you see something wrong, you can't believe the practices that they do. They do such despicable things, right? How can they do such things in this religion and you feel the itch to fight? You're fighting, you're fighting. But guess what? It's a religion. It's not a person. You can't fight with a religion. You're not winning, but you're still fighting, right? Or it's like fighting against a certain culture. You, you can't believe they do such things in their culture because it's not your culture. You would never do something like that. How can they, they show their navels and roam about? Like navel girls cannot show their navels. How can they do it in this culture? How can Fraser wear his hat and lead worship in this culture? I can't believe this. It's, it's so crazy. A pastor having tattoos. It's so crazy, right? It's, it's a different culture and you want to fight. But it's a culture. It's not a person. You can't fight against a culture. You're not winning, but you're still fighting. You're not making a difference, but you're still fighting. And in, in all this fighting against religion, against culture, against uh, politics, against people on social media, in all of this fighting and fighting and fighting, you're not winning anything. But you know what? You're losing a lot. You're losing your peace. You're losing your joy, you're losing your, your energy, but most importantly, you're losing your time. Because look, you can get your energy back, you can get your joy back, you can get your peace back, but you can never get your time back. Time that is lost, you will never see again in your life. Let me show you. Let me count three seconds, okay? One, two, three. These three seconds, you're never going to see again in your life. It's gone. Yeah. The time that you lose fighting a fight which is not your fight, you're never going to get it back. Imagine the things you could have done with the time that you lost fighting a fight which is not your fight. Imagine the time you could have given to people in your life who need your time. Imagine if you are given that time, but you lost that time fighting a fight which is not your fight. Imagine the fights you could have fought, your fights, the good fight, but you cannot because you lost that time fighting a fight which is not your fight. Don't fight every fight because it's right. Maybe it's right, but it's not your fight. Maybe it's right but maybe it's not right for you. Your fight is the good fight. Fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. So what is the good fight though? What's the good fight? I want to show you exactly what the good fight is and practically what the good fight is. Because as Christians, we, we read uh, scriptures, but we don't get the practicality of every scripture, right? I want to show you how to fight the good fight. The Bible says what? The Bible says, fight the good fight of what? Not of faith, of the faith. Fight the good fight of the faith. It's not fight the good fight of faith. And this is a very, very important detail. Because all major Bible translations will say, fight the good fight of faith. Even your favorite go and uh, Bible translation, the King James Version says, fight the good fight of faith. I don't know how King James Version became so popular in Goa. It's not like it's, it, by the way, it's not Apostle James, okay? It's not Disciple James. It is, uh, it is King James the sixth 
of England. So it's the Anglican church, but somehow we are like, man, it's the right one. Um, but even the King James Version gets it wrong. It says, uh, in the King James, it says, fight the good fight of faith. But in the original Greek language, because this is the New Testament, it's not written in Hebrew, it's written in Greek. The original Greek language, it says, fight the good fight of the faith. The word, the Greek words there is tes pistios. Not pistos, but tes pistios, which means the faith. It's not talking about faith the verb, it's talking about faith the noun. It's talking about Christianity. Fight the good fight of Christianity. Fight the good fight of being a Christian. And what is being a Christian? Following Jesus. Fight the good fight of following Jesus. That's your fight. That's the fight you're called to fight. Fight the good fight of following Jesus. But question, how do you follow Jesus? How do you follow Jesus? Let me show you practically. How do you follow anybody? Let me show you. Sunil, you want to come up? You want the lizard? You want to be Jesus for some time? Yeah, five minutes? Give him a big hand. He's Jesus for five minutes. Keep on. How, how, how can I follow Sunil? How can I follow Sunil? I'll have to... Keep Sunil in front of me, right? Yeah. To follow Sunil, I'll have to keep Sunil in front of me and go wherever Sunil goes because Sunil is in front of me. And I've kept Sunil in front of me, right? Yeah. It's not just me behind Sunil, but I've kept Sunil in front of me. That's how you follow Jesus. But it's not the whole part, okay? This is where we stop as Christians. We only go where Jesus goes. That's not the whole part. What about if I want to go that way? What if I want to go that way? Because you, you don't only fall, go where Jesus goes, right? Yeah. There are some things that you're called to do. And this is where Christians get it wrong. They leave Jesus and they, they only go where Jesus goes, but where they want to go, they leave Jesus out. What if I want to go this way? How do I follow Sunil this way? I have to keep Sunil in front of me, right? And I have to go... That side, keeping Sunil in front of me, keeping my focus on Sunil as I head in that direction. And wherever I go, if I want to go back and get myself a coffee, I have to keep Sunil in front of me and go and get my coffee, right? I want to go to the toilet, I keep Sunil in front. We're not going to demonstrate that. Thank God I'm not following Sunil, I'm following Jesus. But following Jesus is keeping Jesus in front of you wherever you go, in every area of your life, in every direction that you turn to. But that's not all. That's not the whole part. There's still another one. It's not about just keeping Jesus in front of you. It's also about keeping everything else behind you. Because keeping Jesus in front of you is putting Jesus first, right? It's putting Jesus first. So nothing comes between me and Jesus. So I have to keep everything else. If Jesus is first, everything else goes third, fourth, fifth. So following Jesus is not just putting Jesus in front of you. Following Jesus is putting everything else behind you. Yeah. Following Jesus is putting Jesus in front of you and your job behind you. Following Jesus is keeping Jesus in front of you and your relationships behind you. Following Jesus is keeping Jesus in front of you and your fights behind you. And putting Jesus first, keeping Jesus in front of you is a fight. It's not easy to put Jesus in front of you in every situation of your life. It's a fight. Putting Jesus in front of you when, you when you're angry is a fight. Yeah. Putting Jesus first when you're angry is a fight, right? Because it's not just putting Jesus in front of you, but putting your anger behind you. Yeah. 
And that is a fight because you want to you fight. You want to fight. You, you're angry and you have the right to be angry. This person hurt you. You have the right to be angry. This person said something wrong. You want to be angry. But then that's not your fight. Your fight is not the right fight. Your fight is a good fight. So you fight. You fight. You fight to put Jesus in front and your anger behind. It's a fight. It's a fight to put Jesus in front of you when you're hurt. It's a fight because you, you, you have every right to feel hurt, right? This person did something and you have the right. You want to stay at home. You want to close your door. You want to cry. You want to be away from people. You want to stay in your heart because you have the right to be hurt. You have the right. But that's not your fight. Your fight is not the right fight. Your fight is the good fight. And so you fight. You fight. You fight with yourself to put Jesus in front of you and your heart behind you. It's a fight to follow Jesus when you are fighting for the right thing. It's a fight. Because you want to fight for the right thing. You want to stand up for the right cause. You can't tolerate injustice. You want to do that. You want to fight for people's rights. You want to fight for injustice. You want to fight. But that's not your fight. Your fight is not the right fight. Your fight is the good fight. So you, 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 you turn, you fight, you fight, and you turn, and you fight to put Jesus in front of you and the fight for the right thing behind you. You fight to put Jesus in front of you and what is right behind you. That is your fight. That's your fight because it is a fight. That is the good fight. Because here's the key, here's the key. When you put Jesus in front of you, guess who fights the fight? Jesus, Jesus fights. You might be fighting for the right thing, but if Jesus is behind you, you're fighting for the right thing. It doesn't matter if you're Martin Luther King Jr. or Mother Teresa, you cannot win that fight. You don't have the capacity, you don't have the power. Listen, Martin Luther King lived, he did great things, but we still have racism. Mother Teresa did great things, we still have injustice. You cannot win the world. You cannot save the world. There's only one person who can save the world. And that is Jesus. When you put Jesus in front of you, he fights. In every fight, listen, I'm not talking about cow. I love to fight, okay? I love to fight. Try me out. Say something to me and see what happens to your nose. All right? Because the nose is the first thing I'll do and then I'll run away. Okay? Because I'm not a big guy. I'm not a big guy. I might, I might get hit and I have a brain. So I'll run away. I'll break your nose and I'll run away. I know to do that much at least. But listen, I'm not talking about backing down. I'm talking about putting someone stronger than you in front. And that is a fight. In every situation in your life, in every fight that you fight, putting Jesus first, following Jesus is your good fight. That's your fight. And that's your word for today. That's your word, Sunil. And Sunil said? Amen. Amen. Everyone else said? Amen. Amen. Can you all stand? Can we all stand?
Hallelujah.